Hey, aloha, this is Representative Tupola. Welcome to Bringing It Back to the People. For my very first segment as a representative, I wanted to highlight this high school, Nanakuli High School, for some amazing accomplishments that have been happening. Specifically today, we're covering what happened this season for their football program, which I'm a huge football fan, and I was so proud of what they accomplished. And I brought here the coach, Kiala Watson, to share a little bit of what happened. We have Lyle here, the team captain, who's going to share from a player's perspective, and the AD, athletic director, Mr. Moody. So these three, I feel like, would have the best commentary for what happened and how Nanakuli High School was able to achieve what they did this year and maybe where we're going from here. So I'm going to turn it over to Kiala to share with us, kind of from a coach's perspective, how did it happen? How did you guys do it? We, uh, this year, uh, on the field, our, our kids, our, uh, our team represented us well, both uh, JV and varsity. Our varsity team went uh, all the way to uh, the OIA playoffs, took the, the OIA championship with an undefeated record. Our JV kids, uh, low in numbers, but uh, they also had an undefeated season all the way up into the championship game, and they, they let that one go. But uh, nonetheless, it was a great season for all of them. Um, not, not just uh, looking at things that happen on the field. There's things that happen in the classroom and the community as well, uh, which, which I think, and Lau will share with us about a little bit more about that. But a lot of other things that go into the season to make it uh, successful. Out of the 68 kids we've got in our program, 43 of them are honor roll, principals list, straight A students. And uh, that's something that uh, we, we hammer into them every day. I mean, maybe even more than, than football techniques. Um, our kids are getting the message and uh, it, transfer, it transposes over into their uh, football abilities. <clears throat> we also instill a sense of community pride. Uh, we, we take a lot of time to uh, do community service events and uh, <clears throat> teaching them, putting more value into uh, what they do, what they represent. And uh, by doing all of this, it's just my personal opinion that uh, it helps them, I mean, on the field. I mean, you, you take a kid that uh, just wants to play a game because they like a uniform, put them up with kids who, a kid who wants to play because his dad is proud of him or because his grandma's cheering for him in the stands or because um, he's, he's actually helping people get somewhere. And uh, I'm pretty sure we, we all know who's going to win that one. And uh, if, if, that, if that little picture is not good enough, then I don't know, our season this year is a good a testament to that. Each one of our kids, they, they understand what's at stake. I mean, they get the picture. Lau here is one of the big ones who is going to, this is his senior year, and he's going off in the college, uh, possibly on a football scholarship. And uh, he's going to take that message to wherever he goes. He's going to be one of the great ones. Whether, we, whether he knows it or not, he's going to be a, a leader in our community. Maybe in your shoes one day, I'm hoping. I so. Or maybe in mine, maybe in my shoes. But uh, the lessons that he's learned, I mean, how to be successful, he, he's, a, he's a captain. He is a leader of our team who has uh, led his team and our community to a perfect season. And so uh, kids like Lau standing next to me here are the kids who are going to make big changes for us. I mean, I'm just excited and I'm proud to be a part of it. Okay, so Lyle is the team captain of Nanakuli High School football team. He's a senior. He's moving on to college. What we want to know from Lau is from a player's perspective, how did the season end up? Was it tough during the middle part? Was it at the end? How did they feel when they won? And now that it's over, how is the team holding together and where are they going from here? One thing Coach Kiala taught us um, for my ninth grade year, he, he wanted us to be a better man. Before this season started, um, it all comes up to, um, to the off-season workouts. Um, coming into the season, we didn't know what to expect. It was just um, the state of mind of hard work, getting our grades straight, and then just being smart in the mind. Um, one thing that I'd like to share that Coach Kiala taught us, or he inputted into our mind, was to be a better, a better self-person than um, even thinking of football. All right, we also have the athletic director here, Mr. Moody, who's been here at Nanakuli High School for many years. And now that he's seen all of this progression, I wanted to ask him, how did they get to this point? And as the athletic director, where are they going from here? Hello. I think um, uh, for us, in regards to what our vision was, uh, uh, and in, in re just in regards to this whole uh, season, in terms of uh, the success of the team, this is it wasn't a one year thing. It's 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 been a, a, a four years in the making uh, to the point where uh, Kiala took over. He he took over four years ago, and uh, you know when we when we put him in that position, uh, our our goal 
was to basically use the football program to to uh, develop our kids, to basically teach them uh, the importance of hard work, to teach them the importance of teamwork and discipline and uh, and respect for one another, uh, and uh, the the whole idea was us was for us to uh, encourage uh, our kids to be successful not only uh, in athletics but through athletics that that's going to carry over to uh, the classroom that's going to carry over to their personal lives. So I think that was that was how it all started. Uh, uh, and Kiala has been instrumental in uh, in helping uh, encourage that change. Yeah, and we and, and we can we, we we can see it with what's happening. Not on, like I said, not only on the on the football field now, but also in the classroom and in the community. And and that was our vision uh, when when we that was my vision. That was Kiala's vision when when we took when he took over this program. For me now, I, I think with with what he's done. You know the sky is the limit, yeah. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to uh, to uh, continued success and uh, you know continued uh, uh, a continued change in the mindset of uh, our kids through athletics. So I think that's basically what we're trying to do here in terms of uh, uh, this whole thing. So it sounds like a big part of their success was teaching principles and values to the kids and it was more holistic for the whole being of the student rather than focus just on the success on the football field. And as Mr. Moody pointed out, it was four years in the making, so it didn't just happen overnight. This was a slow progress that they had, thanks to Kiala for his leadership in stepping into this position and taking the team from where they were to where they are now. And Mr. Moody said, sky's the limit, so Div 1 might be coming up. You never know. These guys, you never know what's going to happen because they could win a Div 2 champ with undefeated record. Maybe they are ready to step up. But I wanted to ask Kiala really is, what did he feel the night before that championship game? Because they have this perfect record, all the pressure. How do you keep the boys calm? Man, I think uh, part of being prepared is uh, thinking well in advance. I mean, I, I had, you asked me what I'm, what I'm thinking the night before the game. I had the same thought months before, before the game. All right, I'm thinking, and it's the way it's got to be. I'm thinking <clears throat> of best case scenario way before the season even started. I already put myself in that championship game before the season even started. I put myself in every single situation so that we're ready for it. The, the, word, the word undefeated never really came up in, in, a, in our vocabulary all season long until, until we won the game, actually. We, don't, uh, we, we really don't want to focus too much on just winning, winning games. We don't really want to focus on uh, um, think of what we're doing as good enough. We never want to be satisfied. Our kids are a big, a big part of that. We, uh, it, it, may, it may not sound too nice, but uh, we don't let them celebrate at all. Because uh, in, in our program, you celebrate when the, when the job is done, when, it's, when the work is finished. We've never celebrated all season long. Uh, it, was kind of, it was kind of weird. After we won our championship game, when it was time to celebrate, nobody knew how to celebrate. I mean, uh, high fives are going wrong way and everybody's all awkward because we've never celebrated before. But uh, I think that kind of focus, I mean, uh, making sure that you don't just take, take, uh, take things lightly. I mean, you've got to keep big picture in mind. Uh, the, the, whole, the whole reason and the way that we got to where we, where we got was because we were never satisfied. I mean, you win a game, ah, you're good enough for that day, but uh, you've got another game <clears throat> the next week. I mean, what you did last week is not really gonna, gonna help you get another one on the next week. Keeping the focus and keeping big picture in mind it was, it's, it's pretty tough. I mean, for a bunch of 16, 17-year-old kids who uh, love to win, they love to hear their name on the speakers, it's easy for them to, uh, to lose the focus and uh, be satisfied not wanting to come back on Monday and do more work. But uh, it was never an issue for our guys. I mean, they, they know what is, what's at stake. They know the work it takes. And uh, one of the biggest takeaways is that they actually know what, it, what, is, what it's like, what it takes to be successful. The, the lesson that they learn in football, and I say it all the time, that football imitates life. Uh, the lesson that they learn, how to overcome, how to be the underdog, uh, what, what to do when your back's against the wall and uh, everybody's just out to get you. Uh, the way that you overcome all of that, they, they learn what it takes. And so uh, taking that, carrying that over, which is uh, the whole reason behind 
any any school athletic program is to take that into your real life. I mean, Lau and the rest of the guys, they're going to take their, their, these lessons, apply it to their lives. And any time in, uh, out in the real world where they've got uh, adversity in front of them, they've, they've got what it takes to knock it over, knock it down, and uh, overcome. I mean, uh, we a lot of us, we celebrate wins on the scoreboard, but uh, man, these, these small victories that, uh, that we don't see, but that will make a big difference later on in life are the ones that, that I'm out to get. I want to win those battles. I really love what Kiala just shared. Honestly, what he's saying is that they created their own reality. They already knew what it was going to feel like. They were mentally prepared for that day. And I loved what he said about not celebrating because really they knew that the job was far bigger than what they had started with and that the boys were ready for that. Yeah. You know what? We can. We can overcome anything if we mentally are prepared. And I want to ask Lyle that. Were you mentally prepared for the game that night? Um, I, don't, I don't think too much about the game. I... I focus of what's at stake the minute of that day, or I guess you could say the day before. We usually run this. Um, we have a routine we go through the day before games. We go through all of our plays, um, make sure that we got it. We go through a seven second drill. Um, we call out offense. You got seven seconds to run out to the 50 yard line. Defense, seven seconds to run out to the 50 yard line. It's just to make sure we are prepared to um, what's at stake for the next day. It's been like that for the whole season. Um, I liked what Coach Kiala said about not celebrating after each game. <laughs> he right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> after each game, even if it was a blowout score, we would just come in the locker room, sit down, listen to Coach talk. Um, he talks mistakes. He don't. He um, the whole season. I don't think I ever heard him say. Um, Oh, it was a great game. It was a good game. It was always um, the mistakes because we have to focus on the um, on the mistakes in order for it um, to be corrected for the next game. You know what I mean? So I remember I'm gonna share a little story. Um, I like sharing stories. I remember after Wailua's game, uh, we challenged Wailua at Wailua. We I forget what um, what the score was, but I think we won by three touchdowns or more. Um, by that point on, it was our fourth game going into the season. So I think we came 4-0. Our team just totally forgot what whole purpose as a team. Just like Coach Kiala said, we didn't have a vocab for undefeated in our books. We had teamwork, grades, and discipline. If you don't have the grades, you can't play football. That was one of the one things that he um, instilled us into our mind. Because if you don't have grades in the classroom, you can't you can't play football, you know. So that was like a motivation for the boys. Oh man, we gotta get good grades um, to play football. But it, but it, um, but stating that you can't be like that in football season. Oh, you only gotta get good grades just to play football. It has to be a year round. So that's what our football boys has been doing, you know, playing year round sports, getting good grades, um, so that they can play whatever sport they wanted to, or even carry that on to college. Um, another one was teamwork. We, we had to work as a, as a team or as, a, um, as brothers in order to pursue our, um, our dream, what we wanted, our dream that we um, upheld ever since the beginning of the season. Um, we, we hold this one week camp before the season starts. Um, that one week camp, that's practically a week to bond with your brothers, but also a week to show what you got, you know, to show if um, to show what what hard work what hard work means to show um, how much you put in into the off season going into the season, and also to show um, you know just basically what you got. <laughs> and another one was discipline. <sighs> discipline. We we practically the team practically learned that the hard way. Um, it's <laughs> it came down to. To just running sidelines to sidelines more than a hundred times, I guess you could say, doing up downs more than a hundred times, because um, let's just say one player um, didn't understand the word discipline. You know what I mean? Because if one player messes up, or if one, or even if the team captain, let's just for say I mess up, I do something dumb on the field the game before. That's where discipline comes into place. You know, like coach is gonna look at me like, oh. You don't have discipline? All right. He's not going to say that, but I know he's thinking that in his head. So next week comes, oh, man, he just makes us run. And he, and he talks on the sideline. He tells us, 
he just says like just know what is know what is discipline and and know what's right because when you wear the jersey that says Nana Kuli on top, you're re you're representing the community and um, your family that's in the stands. So um, I pre I'm pretty sure every year coming into the football season, we we've had a week like that. Uh, we've had an extra hell week to remind us what's discipline and to remind us who are, um, who we're playing for. Yeah, I love what Lyle just said. So it sounds like discipline was at the root of the success of this season and for probably the past four seasons to bring them here. It's so refreshing to hear that grades is important because man, college is something else. You want to play college ball, you got to have that in order to get on the field. So I'm so glad that at this level, they're already teaching the kids that that's the most important thing. It's not all the extra practices. It's not having practice on Sunday. It's not having extra practices on the weekends. It's about being disciplined in the classroom because if you can do that mentally, then you can do it physically on the football field. And so I'm going to ask, um, actually, you know, maybe we should do some up-downs to end this. Ha, 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 ha. Maybe Coach Kiala should call some up-downs and then me and Lau go at it. <laughs> so I want to ask, um, you know, Athletic Director Mr. Moody a question. He said that it also is going to take the community. And, you know, I'm the community representative right now as the state legislator. And I want to ask him, what, what does he expect from me? What do they expect from me as a rep in order to support this program and in order to help them to achieve their goals? I think um, for us as a school, uh, the whole idea is that uh, through athletics and through education uh, that, we're, that we're creating opportunities, more opportunities for, for our young people. So uh, I think uh, in, t in terms of what we do in, the, in athletics is, is try to create a mindset with our kids uh, that's going to teach them how to be successful, which uh, eventually will create more opportunities for them as adults. Yeah. Uh, and again, again, I, I think uh, if we can teach them that through athletics and that will carry over to the classroom uh, and it will carry over to the community. So uh, in regards to uh, community support, uh, we, we just ask that, uh, you know, our community understands that and supports that and uh, does everything that they can to, to encourage us to continue in that direction. So what I hear him asking for is a new football field. Yep, that's what we need. We need these guys to succeed, and if we don't have the, the resources to succeed, we can't do it. So that's something that i got to push for for this school. Kiala, what do you expect out of me as a representative? I mean, uh... Whether you know it or not, I mean, the, the position that you're in, you are a leader. I mean, uh, and as, as, it, uh, as it pertains to us, we're, we're bringing up leaders. Um, what would really help from anybody in a leadership position, not just you, but maybe a principal, an AD, and a head coach, is to be an exemplary leader and uh, also to, to, show, to show them that we care. Um, our principal, Mr. Peter Loa, he, he reminds us every time that we got a meeting, and uh, he's got a saying that he lives by, and it's... Um, People don't, they don't care what you know until they know that you care. Um, for us and uh, for anybody who, who's trying to make an impact, you, you've got to have, for in my position, it, there's two passions that, I, that I've got to have in order to be effective. Uh, I've got to have a passion for football, which is definitely there. I love the game of football. It's done a lot for me in my life. And uh, the other passion that I have is for my community. <clears throat> uh, going, just going into anything with two passions, whether you love something and you love something else. Going into my, uh, myself as a coach, uh, going in as a coach with the passion for football and the passion for my community is going to help me. It's, gonna, it's enough fuel in my tank to keep me going for a million years. And uh, uh, it gives me, it lifts me up when I'm down. I mean, if I, if I get discouraged once in a while, it doesn't matter. I've got a passion and it will never leave me. Um, for you, I, already, I can already tell that you've got a passion. I mean, uh, you wouldn't be in your position if you ain't got a, the passion. Um, just exerting that passion, passing that on uh, to somebody else, pass that passion on to someone else, and uh, showing everybody uh, what it's like to be a, a good leader, an exemplary leader. And uh, yeah, uh, so far, let me, let me commend you. Thank you for uh, what, you, what you've done for us so far. I mean, something as small as just a banner. I mean, our kids have never seen a banner before. As soon as they saw it, we took it down and we took a picture with it. It's in our locker room now. So we kind of stole it, but uh, we've got it. We've got it. 
But uh, they were they were excited. I mean, something as small as as a big banner that says championships on it, and uh, it was donated by you, our representative. Man, it, it speaks volume about um, how how everybody feels about our kids. They they feel the uh, the passion, like I'm talking about. They feel the love. They feel the support, and uh, that's what they're gonna need. Uh, it, it should be something that will sustain them for uh, at least their four years of here representing us. Thanks so much, Kiala. So what I hear him saying is that Lyle's going to be the next state representative, huh? huh? That's what we're talking about. And so I'm going to ask Lyle what he thinks about that. I mean, honestly, I know I'm not going to be in this position forever, and I'm so, so concerned that I need to be preparing the kids for, their, for the generations to come. There are not enough kids that understand what's happening in our government, and this is what is affecting us every day. So I'm going to ask Lyle, hey, what do you got in your future? What kind of leadership positions are you looking at? Um, football is my passion. I, I practically carry that in my everyday life. Um, I like to share uh, a, little, a little life story because um, Coach Kala always told us, you know, share your story. Growing up, it was, it was, it was really hard. My, um, growing up, I had, I had parents that were um, practically, practically drug addicts. They practically did, um, I guess you could say, all the drugs that you can name growing up. So um, my fourth grade year, my sister just had graduated high school. She, um, six, about six months after she graduated high school, my parents lost our house. We lived over here in Nana Cooley, um, Mohi Street. So when she lost, um, lost our house, we kind of lived on the beach for a little while. And then um, my sister, she already had moved on. Um, she was living in Pro City. They took us in my fourth grade year. Um, it was it was hard for me because knowing that you know, like, oh wow, my parents why did why did I have to be like this? I didn't really understand at the time. I lived I lived with my sister for three years, and it's just um, living with her for those three years. She made me, she made me the man who I am now. For my sister, all she wanted for me and my brothers was was to be the best she can be. I remember her asking me, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" I told her I wanted be I wanted to be in the NFL, and then she said, "Okay." And ever since then, she's just been guiding me into um, where I want to take myself into um, into life, you know. And ever since then, she's just been a big supporter, a big supporter for me. And now that I have um, scholarships that's offered to me, I'm actually going to enroll myself into a college. Um, given this opportunity to go to play, um, to play college ball, it's been a real blessing because it's... What I've wanted since um, ever since I was a little boy, I every day I've I've dreamed of playing in the NFL. Every day I've dreamed of playing with the Eagles because that's my football team, you know. <laughs> um, it's just this past summer, you know, when I got my offers, um, I cried. My sister cried, my brother-in-law cried, my brothers cried um, because that's that's what I wanted, you know. And um, I, I finally have a chance to enroll myself into college. I have to keep my grades up. Um, this is where Coach Kiala plays a role in my life, you know. He, just like I said, he was the first first coach um, to ever teach the 2015 class. It was, it was, it was his first year. Um, he, made, he made all of us understand that grades was important. So ever since then, um, I've just been keeping my grades up. And like just seeing from before to now, looking at myself now, it's just a real blessing to have him. Um, in my life because he taught me what's um, what's at stake. Well, I want to thank um, Coach Kiala, Lyle, and um, Mr. Moody for coming out today. And I'm just really excited for Lyle's future. Um, I just wanted him to know that you can do whatever you want. You know, we believe in you. We believe that you can be whatever you want to be. You know, I supported my husband through a college football career and, and an NFL one, and it's not it's not easy. But kids from Hawaii can do it. Kids from public school can do it, and they can make it, and they can do what they put their minds to because of the discipline aspect. And lucky for Lyle, he had these two guys. Lucky for him. Lucky for him, he had his sister. He had people that were there with him, and no matter what trials that he faced, he was able to overcome them because of that discipline and that drive, that desire that he had to do more and be more. And I just want to encourage Lyle to make the right decisions. Because every decision you make from here on out is going to affect your future. So when you're in college, make those decisions to not drink, to not do the things that every other football player does. Make that goal real.
by creating your reality and don't sink to that level of now that I made it into college, I'm set. You're not. You got to work hard all the way through college. You got to prove yourself and you can do it. He can do it, and I'm excited to see his future. I'm excited because District 43, we only do awesome things, and we only have awesome people. And so there's only more to come. I feel like for these next two years, I'm a servant leader, and that's my job is to inspire. And today, I felt inspired and uplifted by these stories, by these men, and I'm just the mouthpiece for it. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching this program, and I hope that if you did feel inspired, uplifted, watch the next one.